everyone, I'm Kadesha, and I have a new GitHub feature for you to check out. Last year at GitHub Universe, we teased an idea for what we call Copilot Workspace. This would allow you to give Copilot Workspace a GitHub issue, and it will automatically propose a solution from planning to implementation. Today, I have Senior Director of Research for GitHub Next, Idan Gazitz, here to show us a first look at GitHub Copilot Workspace. Hey, Don. Hey, Kadesha. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, of course. I'm so happy that you took the time to be here with us today. So let's just jump right into it. Tell us more about Copilot Workspace. What, what is it? What is it? Uh, Copilot Workspace is a brand new, totally different thing where it's like, what if we want to not just suggest like a line or a function, but actually give you like um, a, a way to uh, fix a bug or implement mm -hmm. a feature. Like you're starting from like an issue that you have in your repository, or maybe you, you're starting a net new project um, and you want to write in English, you know, like this is what I would like to happen, right? And then how do you go from that to code, but in a fashion that lets you steer? And so that's Copilot Workspace. You start off with natural language. You can steer it through like sort of a spec phase where you know, it describes like, okay, I understand this is what's there now, and this is what you want to be there. And then you can correct both of those things because maybe it didn't fully understand what's there, or maybe it didn't fully understand what you want, and you have an opportunity to sort of correct it. And then it builds a plan. You know, how is it going to go from what is today to what you want to be? Um, and again, you have a moment to steer, be like, no, you, you missed this edge case, or actually I'd like to refine this to like, you know, explain it a little bit better. And only yeah. then, you know, once you have that spec describing what is and what should be and the plan, how do we go from what is to what should be only then is it going to generate all the code for you. So by the time you get to the code, you've effectively done most of the work of like reviewing mm. the thing that you want to do. So that's Copilot Workspace and it's pretty dope and it, and it feels amazing. And I'm, I'm really excited to, to, to show it off to you today. Yeah, I mean, now that I understand a little bit better of what it is, I'd love to see it. Uh, I know you have a demo for us today. Yes, absolutely. So um, here's here's an issue, straight up JavaScript, and it's it's this contributor gallery. And here you can see, you know, when the gallery cell is active, uh, like it's get it gets expanded and it gets a purple border. But we should also show the contributors GitHub handle on top of their avatar, right? So I've got here an issue. Just like I would see, oops, I clicked on the wrong thing. Just like I would, you know, see anywhere in in, uh, in GitHub, except here. Now I have this open in workspace button. This is where oh. all the magic happened. Exactly. So I'm going to click that. Um, and now uh, Copilot's going to build this specification. Let's let's zoom zoom in, enhance. Uh, so, like, what's the spec? Does does it show the contributors get a handle on top of their avatar? And if I wanted to, I can I can also go back and I can actually in Copilot Workspace see see the issue. Um, okay. So, okay, I'm here in the spec, and like, what does it do now? No, it doesn't show it, and the component that's responsible for rendering the gallery cells doesn't include any logic for that. So it's it's able even at the spec phase to sort of look at your code base and figure out which pieces of code are responsible for like the functionality that that's being talked about. So question. So Copilot Workspace is essentially looking at this issue and then it's going into the code and it's saying, okay, here's the current implementation uh, of what you have. And then I see like a proposed section. And so it's proposing, okay, here's how you can do what you want to do. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, you know, it's, Whoa. it's, it's, <laughs> it's round tripping a few times, you know, with the models to figure out what's relevant to the question, right? The question here is like, you know, can we, can we make the, the borders, you know, yeah, uh, like purple border, but also display the, the, the GitHub handle. And right now it says, no, it's not displayed. The file that should do that isn't doing that. Uh, there's no evidence that there's like styling for like the text shadow or whatever. Uh, and in the world that we want to exist, like, yes, it's there and this component has logic and the styling is blah, blah, blah. And the, the Z index is set to 11, which ensures that it appears on top of the avatar image. But let's say I know, you know, maybe Copilot doesn't know, but I know because I've been working on the site since forever that 11 isn't really sufficient. I like, you know, if mm -hmm. I really, if I want this to work, like 
I need to, uh, let's make this like, you know, 100, you know, or something like that. Um, and the font size matches the cell uh, size theme. Okay, sure. Yeah, whatever. But let's add some more stuff. Let's actually say, actually, what I really want is for um, the active cell border is red. Okay. Okay. Um, and maybe like uh, this um, black text shadow. Let's make a. Let's make it like a like a white text shadow because. You know, if the text is black and the shadow is white, then it'll like knock out the value. It'll be easier to read. Okay. So here I've had an opportunity to steer it. Like instead of me sort of waiting to see what comes out, like pulling the handle on a slot machine and, and yeah. hoping, you know, it's like I have the ability to steer. So once I'm, once Please. I'm happy here, I've got like a whole spec, right? Just like something I would, I would work with a product manager. I'd be like, okay. Yeah. Like, I was just going to say, like when PM send us the, the issues, with the task that they want us to do or like, you know, current implementation, what I expect to see. Um, that's kind of what this is reminding me of. Exactly. That's exactly it. And so now, uh, you know, once I'm happy with that spec, I'm going to click generate plan. And what it does is it figures out exactly which files it needs to touch in order to make the changes that it needs to make. And so it's decided that the only file that it needs to touch is this contributor gallery cell. And so it needs to add the GitHub handle, Conditionally render the GitHub handle when the cell is active, apply the text shadow and centering to that. Oh, see, like here, it didn't listen to me. It set the Z index of the GitHub <laughs> handle to 11. Come on, man. That's not cool. Let's fix that. Uh, and change the active cell border to red. Okay. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. You know, I, th I think this is probably right. Let's, let's go ahead and click. Oh, I got to zoom out for you to see everything. Let's click implement. And now uh, it's going to think for a little while because it, it takes a little while. It's going to go like, oh, okay. And it's going to actually generate the diff. And so what it's doing is, you know, it's got these sort of like five, five bullet points as it's yeah. generating it. It's, it's generating with an eye to making each one of these true. And so wow. what I get back is, is a diff. And so, okay, I can see here already. It's like, you know, it's like if it's active and the border is red, otherwise there's no border. And it did set the Z index to 100. All right. Good job. <laughs> um, and it made the text shed a white. All right, good job. Because it doesn't always, sometimes it, it doesn't do the right thing. And if, if it was wrong, I could actually, you know, come in here and, in and make and those edit. changes myself. Exactly. But here it actually got this, this stuff, right? So, so I think this is, this looks pretty good to me. I mean, yeah. as, a, as a diff goes, but it doesn't, I mean, yeah, sure. It looks good to me. Cause as a developer, I'm looking at this and like, yeah, this, this probably looks right. <laughs> But, um, but we've actually gone sort of like uh, a step further and you can actually um, open a code space so you can run this right away. So, so this is going in and it gave us a plan. Well, it gave us a spec, then it gave us a plan, then it implemented the plan. And now we can just pop open a code space to see the plan. That's in That's action. exactly it. So, so here, let me just so like, you know, like I'm going to install my dependencies and I'm going to build it and I'm going to run it. And Codespaces is going to handle all the networking magic in the background. We're going to open it up in, in a split view in a second and, and look at what we built and then maybe, maybe tweak it. Because the other thing about uh, Copilot Workspace is that every stage here, you know, from the, the issue through the spec, through the plan to the generated mm -hmm. code is editable. If I didn't get exactly what I wanted. It's not all or nothing. I don't need to like go back, you know, like do not, you know, pass go, do not collect $200, go directly to like the beginning. No, you can actually go back and be like, I'm going to tweak this thing. I'm going to tweak that thing and then ask it to regenerate things. So let's see what actually uh, came out here. So like, oh, did I forget to build it? I forgot to build it. That's why. So this is how you know the demo is real because I'm making mistakes. Now, when I come over here and I refresh, It'll be like, hey, Ooh. there we go. And look, it actually did the thing, right? I've got text yeah. now over each one of these things and the border is red. But okay, like maybe I'm looking at this and I'm like, nah, you know, the like the the text with the the, the shadow is okay, but the, the red border, that's too much, man. Can't 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 go that far. So let's maybe like make the active cell border. What's your favorite color? Yellow. Yellow. Okay. Uh, so cool. I can, I can do this and then I can come back and I'll be like, yo, like, you know, update my files and it'll <laughs> go back and it'll, uh, it'll regenerate these things. But if I wanted to make more, more significant changes, if I, if yeah. I, 
if I figured out that like I missed an edge case and how I was handling things, I could go back to the spec and, and add that. And then maybe it would pull more files in it. You know, like right now it's only touching the one file, but it can go ahead and touch as many files as it needs to. And so now, okay, if I've, if I've done my job here, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, npm build, npm run build, right? Uh, then we should get a yellow border. I'm like in suspense. I'm not like looking at the thing down here. What is it? I oh, know. it did do yellow. Okay. So it'll it work. It did do yellow. It did do yellow. Okay. NPM start. And so if I refresh this and it's yellow, but ha, huh, interesting. See, like when I regenerated it, mm. like, you know, the text shadow got messed up. The white. Why? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. Well, see computers. Yeah. White white but this is the other thing like you know it's it's great when there are like these really polished like ai demos that like you know always work exactly right but we know that in the real world we have to make it so that it's easy for you the developer to always be in control always be able to edit what comes out yeah. um and so you know here we have it the fact that like this diff is not just like like a picture i'm looking at but it's actually like a surface i can edit um you know that makes all the difference it means that i can I can I can mess with my code as I'm as I'm building it. So that's Copilot yeah. Workspace, and and we use it internally. We we find ourselves dog fooding it all the time while building Copilot Workspace. We've used Copilot Workspace on Copilot Workspace quite a lot. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> um, and here, like the end result here is, you know, I do all this stuff. I sort of ping pong back and forth and make sure that I have what I want, and then I click create pull request, and bam, I'm wow. done. It just creates a pull request for me. Um, so. Uh, and it's generating so you, a description for you for that. Pull oh yeah. Plus, I mean, I didn't even get into this, but like you can, you can do all this stuff, not even generate a pull request and then, you know, like share a snapshot and like, you know, here's a snapshot. I'll copy it. I'll send it to you by Slack and you'll open it on your machine. And then wow. you can take this workspace and iterate on it yourself and be like, no, I'm going to add this. And you forgot to handle this edge case and, and so on and so forth. So um, the first, let's call it post chat AI sort of interface. Um, this is awesome. <laughs> this is awesome, Idan. Like, I can't believe we went from like an issue to a plan to code to like, voila, here's a little demo. This is pretty amazing. I really, I really cannot believe this is real. Um, I think it's such a wonderful time to be a developer. And it's such a wonderful time to be a developer that uses GitHub. Is this available today? Uh, so, uh, it's launching to technical preview on April 29th. Uh, right now, it's, you know, if there's any questions about like, oh, does, does it come with my co-pilot? No, all that stuff is, this is just the technical preview. And yeah. right now we're just focused on what do we need to do in order to make this be like a super reliable, super awesome experience uh, for developers. I'm curious about co-pilot workspace even more. So. We just saw it complete a simple, relatively simple JavaScript task to, you know, get those updates in. So like what type of coding task can Copilot Workspace work on or help with? Really anything. Um, it's um, on some level, like what Copilot Workspace uh, does behind the scenes to identify what code, like map out the code in your code base. Whether or not it's like a front end code base, like this, this thing that we just saw, or maybe it's something that's a library, you know, and you're implementing something or writing tests or I don't know, whatever. Um, the important thing is the the bridge from natural language to code, but with like enough guardrails around it that we can take that natural language and make it actionable. So it's really for any task. That's exactly the point for, for all the tasks that you do every day. Um, even if it doesn't get you all the way to the goal, but it helps you like, you know, sort of like break out of like that blank canvas syndrome. I'm looking at this ticket. I don't know where to start. You yeah. Know, okay. Let's, let's, let's get it started. Let's break this problem down into like, you know, sort of steps work. How did the team come up with this idea of Copilot workspace and like, why was this idea even, even an idea? Get up next. For listeners who might not know who we are, and you should check out our website, gitupnext.com, um, uh, is GitHub's long bets team, right? Where the where the where the uh, uh, try things out that sound ridiculous team, 
and like you know once upon a time it's just like what if we had ai that could write code for us that was pretty ridiculous right and that's how copilot happened and so initially we actually started there was a the project that we had called speclang which was like what if we just wrote a markdown file and can get back like an entire app um you know like straight up natural language to code but with without any of the steering in the middle just like what if we could one shot it um and it worked kind of and so from that we were like okay but how do we have something that's really like task oriented like that's there and instead of you saying to the computer like spoon feeding the computer like now give me this suggestion now give me this suggestion now give me this suggestion what if we could let the developers really say this is what i'm looking to achieve and it comes alongside you and helps you do that um and then a lot of effort later like this but uh this is how it sort of came to be. This has been amazing seeing GitHub Copilot workspace. It's truly, truly an amazing time to be a developer. Thanks so much, Idan, for giving us a first look at GitHub Copilot workspace. I'm pretty impressed and already thinking about all the possibilities. But what do you think? Let us know in the comments below and also sign up for the waitlist. The link is in our show notes and be one of the first people to try GitHub Copilot Workspace. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future uploads and stay tuned for more checkout videos coming your way very soon.